Good morning. Uh, today we're going to have a go at drawing an apple using light and shade. It doesn't have to be an apple, you can choose a pear or anything else you've got at home. Spend a bit of time just setting it up and making sure that you like the angle. Set your light up so that you've got it coming from one direction. Make sure you've got a sharp pencil and a pencil sharpener and a rubber to start with. So just get comfortable for a minute. Then lightly, very lightly, because you don't want to be trying to rub out a hard mark, just try and get exactly the shape of the apple. Now we tend to think of apples as being completely round, but they're not. They have all sorts of different sort of slightly flat sides, especially down the sides. And the bottom of the apple is very different from the top. So really look carefully and don't just draw what you think is there. Really have a look and see if you can get exactly the right shape. Now I've drawn this very lightly so that I can rub it out if I don't like it. Now try and find the point where the stem grows because that's where the apple's grown from, right from the middle of the apple and it grows out um, from, the, from the tree and all of the apple radiates from that point. So getting the, the point at which the stalk grows from is very important. So your stalk might go over the edge of the apple and it might not. So have a really close look. So here I am just trying to get the edges nice and accurate. So I'm not afraid to rework them. The thing about drawing is it makes you look. The more you look, the more you change things, the more you realise you need to change things. So right in the middle, you get the stalk. Now the edge of the apple sort of dips in where the stalk is. So you need to draw a little line across where the edge of the apple dips in. And the top of the stalk is three dimensional. So you've got to put a little, little shelf on the top of the stalk and just start, you can gently start shading in there into the center of the apple as you go. So I'm just building up the form now. And here on the side, I thought I would see how dark my pencil can go. So if you have got one at home, try and work with a 4B pencil or a 2B pencil, one of the softer drawing pencils, and just see how very, very dark you can go. And then gradually make it go lighter and lighter and lighter. And just having one of these little scales by the side of your drawing helps you think about whether the bit of the drawing you're doing is as dark as the darkest bit or as light as the lightest bit. So I'm just drawing a little arrow there for the direction of my light, which is coming from a lamp just to my right there. It could be a window, it could be a little standard lamp, anything you've got. So start the shading. And the thing about shading is not to go very, very dark to start off with, but to build it up gradually. Just layer it up a little bit at a time. And here I'm working from where the stem actually grows from the apple because that gives it the feeling of the apple growing from that point. And I'm trying to suggest that dip in the apple and shade it. Now when you do your shading, the direction doesn't matter. You can sort of suggest the shape of the apple with the different ways that you make your pencil make the marks. But the most important thing is to use the side of the pencil and keep your pencil moving so you can keep layering it over, one layer over the top of the next. And the apple is darkest at the bottom where there's no light at all. So gradually getting lighter from that point. And of course the side that the lamp comes on is the very, very lightest side. So I'm working more on the side where the lamp isn't because that's the darker side. So I'm just building up layers of shading now. Just building it up. And although 
this drawing is is about light and shade and not about colour, there's nothing wrong with adding a few little marks for where some of the red lines are on the apple because they help to sort of give the texture of the apple and suggest the form. So here I am building up a bit more of the side and keep going around the bottom and I'm not afraid to draw in with my rubber just to just to remove any bits that went a bit awry, a bit, a bit messy. So I keep going back to bits that I've already drawn and working over them again. So do that rather than going very, very dark to start with. Much easier to sort of shade over the top and knit the layers together really. It's a bit like knitting it. I'm building up gradually here. So one side of the apple is much darker than the other side. Now what's quite helpful is you can squint your eyes and that helps take out the colours and the detail so that you can really concentrate on where the actual light and shade is. And here I'm putting in some of the lines on the apple, some of the marks which help to sort of build up the surface really. A sharp pencil is much nicer to work with, you get a much nicer sort of effect than a blunt pencil and you can control the detail much better. So the stem really is one of the darkest bits of the apple. So make that as dark as the top of the scale on the right and underneath the apple as well. So I keep going back to the middle bit, just sort of trying to get that dip where the apple goes right in there and then the edge where it curves out. So just building up there, going darker and darker as I feel more confident, so I don't feel confident straight away about where I've put the light and shade. It comes as you as you work into it and you feel the sort of volume of the apple building up. So just tidying up there. And now I'm going to try and get a very, very delicate shadow just to one side. So you see, I tried not to draw a heavy circle because that makes it too solid. But just very gently use the side of the pencil just to suggest a shadow. The shadow is very, very delicate and it's a sort of bluey, violety colour. So it's not a dark, it's not a dark shadow. It's, it's just very, very sensitively done. And try and resist the temptation to draw a line round the shape of the shadow because that spoils it slightly. Really using the side of the pencil there, working over and over and over again. There you can just tidy it up a bit to get that shape. Now I noticed while I was drawing this that I was smudging it a little bit with my hand as I went over that scale on the right. So another thing you can do is to tear a little bit of paper and put it under your hand if you find yourself smudging across your picture, which I realised I was doing there. Then just put a little bit of paper underneath to stop the smudging. There was the smudging I was talking about. 
Perhaps you could just put your tonal scale a bit further away. There we are, there's a bit of paper there. So if you find yourself smudging, just put a bit of paper under your, under your hand. And there, you've finished your lovely apple. So now when you've finished it, you could try a colour version, if you liked, in pencil crayons. Or you could just wash the apple and eat it. Great.